What up, everyone? We got the last box of August here. So, hopefully I should have no problem doing the monthly review, and then we can catch up with September. But, the last box is Power Up Box. So, normally this is one of the first boxes to arrive in the month, but this month is different because I've had a huge amount of problems dealing with this company. I just, random things have come up, and it's been a huge mess. Um, basically, I have a monthly subscription with this company, and it standard way it works. Uh, you They take money out of your account monthly whenever they do, and they send you a box. But I started getting notifications on a daily basis saying that, that there's a problem with my account. There was a problem with my renewal subscription. It didn't go through. So I started contacting the company immediately and tried to work this out. Um, so uh, we went through this whole back and forth thing, but I, it, it just took forever. Like Everything we tried to do just didn't work. For some reason, the card wasn't going through. And when I first logged into my account, all my information was mixed up. I looked at the address, and it was a different address. Like It wasn't just a different number, like a completely different address in like Washington on my account. I don't know what happened. At first I thought maybe it got hacked or something like that, but but everything was different about it. So I changed the information and we I went back and forth with the customer service and it just took the entire month to figure it out. I ended up having to cancel my account and start a new account and then put a credit card on file. So it's been a big mess and we're still trying to sort it out. The good news is that this company was very helpful. Um, the, you know, with any box company, with any business, shit happens. It's always going to. Accidents happen. There's no way around it. Something's going to come up. So it's not the problems that happen that are the issue. It's how the company handles things that are the issue. Everyone knows about my debacle with Infinity Crate. Shit happened. Like, but it wasn't the things that happened. It was how they handled it. They didn't talk to me. They ignored me. They didn't refer handle the situation. And that pissed me off. But luckily, this company was good about it. Every time I contacted them, they had a response from me within 24 hours, and they were very helpful about it. <clears throat> the fact that it was such a pain in the ass, it's not necessarily their fault. Obviously, there's a problem with some kind of algorithm or coding on their website, so it's technically their fault, but it's a problem I'm sure they're trying to fix. So I don't know if anyone had the same issue. But anyway, they were very helpful, so every time I contacted them, they replied right back to me, and... They were trying to work things out. They apologized for it. So it took, it didn't get resolved till September, but luckily I told them about my channel and things like that. So they said, well, we'll still get you an August box to make sure you can do the whole review. So thank you for being helpful about that. So I appreciate that. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at this box and see what we got. Again, you notice I got the smaller box, which last month happened, but I, I don't know why they're not sending out big boxes anymore. It seems a little bit odd. But anyway. Uh, the first thing we got in here was a shirt. So the good thing about Power Up Box, you're never getting crossovers, you're always getting branded shirts, which is very rare, but a good thing. So we got a Transformer shirt. So we got the standard Autobot symbol on there. And yeah, this is just like, a, it kind of looks like fatigues color, but if you look at it close, it's like pixels, so it's a little bit pixelated, but it is branded and things like that, so that's cool. Um, one thing I noticed about the shirt, it's it, I the way they printed it. So you can tell how it's like very flat and stuck together. Um, if you if I when I open up the sleeve, it's like sticky on the inside. And I think the problem was whoever printed this shirt didn't print it the right way. Because usually when you print a shirt, you have to open it up and stick something on the inside. Because when you spray like the ink on it, when you transfer ink on there, you don't want the shirt laying down because the ink seeps through the clothes. And I think that's what they did. Whatever whoever this company is just says transformers on there but but basically they laid the shirt flat and printed the ink on there and it seeped through so you can feel it's like sticky on the inside from whatever ink they use so whoever was printing the shirt did an amateur job but at least it is branded and it looks pretty cool like there's nothing super special about it but you know it's still at least a branded shirt so I'm gonna give this shirt like a 7.5 out of 10 because I'm sure with a washing it'll get rid of the sticky whatever it is in there and it seems decent quality it is branded and although it doesn't really blow me away with the design it's not super amazing it's still cool and it's something that I think everyone can enjoy so Transformers t-shirt next we got a pop figure and we got Bender so this is actually a really cool pop figure um, the unfortunate news about it is that I already have this one, which just solidifies the fact, I've said it a million times, if anyone out there is getting boxes regularly, getting a, a bunch of them, d 
don't buy Funko products. Unless it's exclusive, don't buy it because this is the last pop that I had that I didn't have a duplicate of. Officially, like every pop I've ever bought that's not been exclusive has shown up in a box. And I always think there's one exception. I always go out and I'm like, well, I'll get this one because this one seems like a little uncommon. What are the odds of this specific one showing up in a box? And it always does. So if anyone out there is listening, like if you're getting boxes regularly, don't buy Funko products unless they're exclusive because they're always going to show up eventually. They always do. So, and that, that's not their fault. That's my fault. I'm just giving people advice on how to handle boxes and stuff like that. But other than that, it is a really cool pop figure. I liked it a lot. This is one of the few that I went out of my way to buy because I really like the design of it. It is genuinely a cool pop figure. I really like it. So, good choice. But unfortunately for me that I did already have it. But again, I just need to stick to my guns and just never buy Funko products. So, anyway. Next, we got some more Funko. We got a mystery mini of Ninja Turtles. So, um, one thing I've said about mystery minis from any box company putting them in there. Um, it obviously isn't special or anything. It's a generic thing. It's very easy to find. But something I would say about mystery minis is if they're going to be in the box, they have to be current. Because the funny thing about that is you've got to think logically here. If anyone was a Ninja Turtles fan or a Funko fan, they obviously know these exist. So if they were going to buy them or wanted the whole set, they would have gotten them by now. This came out last year, like, a, like I think before the movie came out, back in 2014. So these have been around for a good year now. So if anyone wanted them, they probably would have bought them, gotten them at this point at some way or another. So getting them in the box wouldn't be anything amazing. It'd be pretty hard to find someone that hasn't heard of the series or hasn't already purchased them. And, not, and again, if you're trying to collect mystery minis, you got to buy them all at once because if you buy them one at a time, you're just going to run into duplicates and waste a bunch of money. If you're ever buying figures in blind boxes, the only way to go is to buy in bulk. Either buy a full crate or just buy them all at once because they only put one of each kind in each box. So mystery minis are always fine, but they need to be more current series. So that, that's the thing about it. Once, when it's a year old, anyone who wanted it would already have it. Anyone who doesn't have it probably doesn't want it. So that's the bad thing about that. So not the best choice because it's not current. So that's what I'll say about boxes and mystery minis. Next, we got a Sonic stress ball. So nothing to say about that. It's a stress ball. It's squishy. It's a space. You squish them. So this actually came in a different box, but it was my geek box, and that's from the UK. So I, I'm not going to ding them on putting a repeat item because it was from a different country. So I think that's okay. That's acceptable. But either way, it's not like it's anything special in, uh, anyway, it's just kind of filler. We, like I said, you get, we get a lot of stress balls in, in the boxes. They, they show up a lot. They're very easy to make. They, don't, they cost practically nothing to make, so they show up a lot. We're constantly getting stress balls. It happens. Here's another one. Then, we got a shot glass. And this is of Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. So, yeah, just a Simpsons shot glass. Didn't come in any kind of like special packaging or anything like that. So it just got his face on there. It says Simpsons on the back. Nothing real special about that. They, this is like the third time they put shot glasses, by the way. I don't know what power up boxes and shot glasses. Maybe it's run by alcoholics or something like that. But shot glasses, they're collectible. They're cool. Why not? Then we got a patch. So uh, I'm sure this was different uh, variation from box to box. I'm sure everyone got Looney Tunes. Uh, I got Pepe Le Pew. So I, I think everyone got a different character. I think they were just there at random. But this is just an iron-on patch. Um, nothing super special about it. Iron-on patch. And then the last item, we got some candy. So this came in a little plastic container with Megatron's head on Ooh, Megatron's head. And then it just had some candy in there, little Transformers-shaped candy. And it's just the heads of the Autobots and the Decepticon, their little emblem. Let's try one, though. Let's see what it tastes like. Tastes pretty good. Tastes like sweet tart. I like it. One thing to note, though, they were incredibly hard to get out of there. They were stuffed in there so tight, it took me like 10 minutes to get the candy out. So whoever designed this needs to redesign it and make it more accessible for kids to get the damn candy out because it was very difficult. It was a huge pain in the ass. So anyway, that was all the items in the box. 
Let's run back to the box and give this some value. So first, our shirt. So I gave this a 7.5 out of 10, but this will still get the 12 to 15 dollar rating. It was branded, again, not super special or anything like that, but I think everyone can enjoy it, and it wasn't some crappy crossover. So 7.5 out of 10, I think is reasonable. Then, the pop figure, 10 bucks. Really no argument there. There is nothing rare or special about it. It's a good choice, it's a cool figure, but not at all hard to find. I'm sure you could still find it in stores if you really wanted to. So, very easily found online for 10 bucks. No argument there. Then, the mystery minis. These are usually six bucks, on average around six. Out of the package, depending on what figure it is, it might change, but with this series, um, they were all common. Every figure was one out of 12. If you bought a box of 12, you got one of every figure, you got the whole set. So regardless of which one it is, it really doesn't change the value around $6 for a mystery mini. Then, the shot glass. So this is right around five bucks. Um, if it came in some kind of packaging, it might be a little more, but honestly, you can buy like sets of shot glasses for 10 to 15 or something like that. So an individual one with no packaging or anything, with smudgy crap on it. Ew, crap in my glass. Um, something without a package like this, I couldn't see going for much more than like five bucks. So right around five bucks, if even that. Because if it was in store, sold individually, it would have some kind of packaging or something like that. But around five bucks is what I'd see it going for. There we go. Next, the patch. So it is branded, um, nothing super special about it, but a branded patch of this size, around three or four bucks for an iron-on patch. Then our stress ball. Like two or three dollars. It did come in a nice little packaging, so I wouldn't say it's like dollar store quality, but not much higher than that. So two or three bucks for a stress ball. Like I said, they're very common. They're very easy to make. It costs practically nothing to make them, but it, at least it's branded. Two or three bucks. Then, the candy. Because it came in a little container, it is a keychain. It is branded, so that brings up the value a little bit, but again, Two or three dollars on this is what I would see it going for in a candy store. It's not like metal or tin or anything, it's plastic, but it does have a nice shape and it came with candy, so two or three dollars I think is reasonable. So, um, the things to note, not a lot of items in this box. It's not like there are too few or anything, but there's usually more items and usually a bigger box. Like the past two months they've had a smaller box and, and this one, not a lot of items. Um, the value on this on the low end was 40 and on the high end it was only 46 which is very low even for this box they they're never gonna give double the box costs 40 and you're never gonna get double with that I can guarantee you but usually you get around sixty dollars in value so you get fifty percent more than you paid for typically which is decent that's a good amount I'd say that's worth it you don't always have to get double but I say if you get at least fifty percent more than you paid for I think that's great value I think that's good but this got nowhere near it, and I was so shocked by it when I opened the box, I kind of thought they made a mistake, because this company offers two kinds of boxes, uh, a premium and a deluxe. I always forget which one's the better one, because they both sound the same. But basically, one's a $30 box, and one's a $40 box. So I kind of thought that maybe I got sent the cheaper box on accident, because it came in a smaller box, it came with less items, and it had a low value. So I thought maybe they made a mistake. <clears throat> But I looked it up online and they didn't. First of all, I couldn't find a single review or anyone out there that got the cheaper box. I couldn't find anyone. Uh, from I, I've only heard of one person getting it months ago and it sucked. So I don't think anyone gets the cheaper box. I think everyone gets the more expensive one. But yeah, everyone got the same stuff. So I think this is just a bad box on their part. I hope this is not of things to come because they were doing good for a while. They were getting better and better each month with with cooler stuff and better value and then they kind of tipped off and last month kind of came down and now we're at this so this is probably the worst box I've seen by them I'm only gonna give this a 6 out of 10 you barely got what you paid for barely the box cost 40 and on the high end you only have 46 and the choices were were okay but they're very very mediocre they were very generic stuff so I think 6 out of 10 is but even a little generous because you barely got what you paid for and you got very common stuff. At the end of the day, you probably could have used that same $40 and purchased the, your, your own version of all this stuff. If you didn't like something, like 
You might not like Transformers or the, any of the franchises in it. You could have taken that same $40 and bought stuff that you know you'd like and made your own box. So with such low value, that's just not good. Um, so a 6 out of 10 might even be too generous. So I'm pretty disappointed with this box. Uh, and the... I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna devalue them on the problems I had. Uh, it was just kind of a fluke, and they we did end up working it out. It's inconvenient, but I can't uh, blame them too much for that. But this box is very disappointing. I gotta say, this has not been a good box uh, month for them at all. So I hope next month gets better. If they don't by next month, I think I'm gonna cancel it because two bad months in a row. If they do a third one, they're out. Forty dollars is just way too much to gamble on. If they're not proving they're worth it. $40 is too much. $40 in a month is a lot. Um, they've recently started doing a referral program. I think it's them. I'll have to double check to, to take down the price a little bit. So hopefully that goes well. But I don't think I'm going to be referring anyone because this box just wasn't that good this month. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought. And fingers crossed that next month will be better. And also fingers crossed that my box will show up and I'll have to chase them down again. But we'll see. So this has been the last box of August. Monthly review will be next, and then hopefully I can jump right into the boxes of September and catch up a little bit. But anyway, this has been Power Up Box, T-shirt, 7.5 out of 10, box 6 out of 10. Let me know what you guys thought. Love you all. Peace.